This is the Matter Inform 3 3D Scanner. And what this allows you to do is effectively take 3D models of everyday objects you can encounter and then import them into your favorite CAD software. Some of the main advertising points of this specifically is the fact that everything is embedded on the device and you connect to the device via your web browser in order to access and control it. This means that while yes, you are at the limitation of the device, you also have the ability to connect to it with pretty much any quality device, anything from a low power to a high power machine, you can connect to this device and 3D scan things. Directly in this package, you're gonna actually have the 3D scanner itself, a tripod to mount the 3D scanner, a turntable, which will automatically be controlled directly by the 3D scanner in certain modes, and you also have a Wi-Fi antenna. The 3D scanner itself actually works by having two cameras and then having a center projector which projects lines of various sizes and directions in order to calculate and determine the distances and dimensions of your 3D scanning subject. And while we'll talk a little bit more about some of the negatives or the caveats to the 3D scanning, overall it's rather good. It produces really high quality detailed models and especially when you're working on something small like a Lego piece, once you have your settings dialed in, you can actually get really high fidelity models directly out of this. Again, we'll touch on some of the areas in which it struggles later on in the video. Also, this user interface is rather intuitive. It doesn't work on a phone, so you actually have to be on a desktop for that desktop aspect ratio. However, however, the user interface is rather intuitive, it's pretty easy to understand, and it works pretty well. I want to say it's relatively bug-free. I did have an issue out of the box where I was having some issues matching the models directly. However, that was fixed with a later firmware update. Overall, the firmware, firmware updates seem to be pretty responsive. And also, interestingly, I actually did encounter a weird issue with my Wi-Fi not working, and they were able to push a firmware update that directly fixed my issue on the first try uh, is pretty much like within a day that I had mentioned this issue to them. Actually, I was talking with the guy, they sent me this, and I was talking with the, I believe the founder, one of the founders of the company, who was emailing me back and forth. And I've got to say, like, out of all the experiences that I've had, like, stuff always goes wrong when you're reviewing stuff. Like, something always isn't working right. There's something that isn't perfect or has issues or it's broken or whatever. And I will say, I got to give credit where credit's due. This was probably the best experience that I've had working with any company in terms of firmware. Now, I don't know how that's going to work with if you purchase this device and then you as the individual are trying to use this. But I would assume at least, like, I've had companies not even admit that there was an issue. So the fact that they were able to fix it so quickly, I give extreme high props to. And yes, I am a content creator. And yes, the review ultimately does depend on device working. But at the end of the day, I think the responsiveness gets like an A++ given how quickly they were able to solve the issue and that they were able to solve the issue on the first try. Highly recommend, at least in terms of the firmware, I believe the firmware and the software behind this is definitely going to make leaps and bounds going forward. So I really do like this is an all-in-one device. You have everything on this device. Everything is saved on the device. You can go through and load it up on different devices, different computers, and everything's stored directly on here, and then you can just download it out. There are some of the intermediary steps where it does some processing and then spits out a model, and then you do a little bit more processing, and it doesn't save the final results from each of those steps, so you have to really start in the beginning, then do some processing again. There's some repetitiveness if you want to go through and reuse a model or pull a model again, but overall... I think it's pretty solid. I really like the fact that this can be done on large and small objects. So the small objects you put on the turntable and you go at it. The larger objects you have to kind of manually scan. You do have to make sure the device is steady so you can't just like hand scan it. You have to like set the device down, let it do its thing and then move it. So it does take a little bit of time for that. But I understand like the process that it's doing for pull these models. That user interface as well is relatively pretty user intuitive. Like I was able to figure it out without much hassle. And I got to say, that's pretty solid when it comes to these devices. Sometimes it gets a little complicated. It's pretty easy to understand. And then the turntable is fully automatically managed by the software. So if you want to have it scan, you just set how many pictures you want. It will rotate the, or pictures, how many scans you want. It will rotate the pictures. It will auto align it. The alignment as well is usually pretty good. I found that the auto alignment doesn't work well when you have something that might have a lot of holes. We'll talk a little bit about how reflective surfaces and black stark surfaces are a little rough sometimes. Sometimes you only pull a little bit of detail out in one scan, and in those cases you have to manually line it up. And now that the manual alignment works fine, I would say that it's actually relatively pretty solid 
when you go through and you start matching up those scans. So since this is a projector based scanner, is that then it projects light and then the cameras determine where that light is, it has some issues with reflective surfaces as well as dark surfaces. So a lot of the stuff that I've found recently is, well, A, this turntable is dark. And as you can tell, that usually gets absorbed as in it doesn't detect that the turntable is part of the scan. Sometimes if you get this little edge here, as you can see, it's a little reflective here, that edge will actually pick up in the scan. So you want to make sure that like the, it will ref will basically project the area that it's scanning. Make sure that you don't include like the lip right there. Also dark like parts or components or maybe dark things that you're scanning. Like for example, this matte finish on this remote that actually controls my overhead camera, that finish really doesn't do super hot when you're 3D scanning. It basically really struggles to detect that something is there. And also when you get to reflective surfaces, specifically the reflective, I want to say the aluminum coating on this graphics card here, that also doesn't do a particularly hot job. It will pick it up, but it has a lot more difficulty determining the distance and it comes out in a very like bumpy, really not pretty finish. So I understand that this is a limitation somewhat of the stuff of the scanner itself. So a way you can get around that is you can take like, I want to say fl flower, or you can take some type of something that you can easily like dust on the device. And then that way you have a object that can be visibly seen by the 3D scanner. And then also it will show up fine. Now, I don't know if flower is the best term, but it's just something that you can basically some type something you can coat it with that's not destructive that is much makes the object much lighter i pick flour because it's usually the easiest in this household it's common household but i don't know if you want to put food on your like whatever you're scanning but it's just something you can try now like white devices something that i want to say like this remote here as well this is rather light this will be picked up really easily so it is just a limitation on the device. I tried some white Legos. I tried different types of Legos. I tried different metallic objects. And I frequently found that the metallic objects, it detects the objects, but it has a much more difficult, higher difficulty determining um, just how like the surface of that object, it makes it very rough versus dark objects. It just doesn't detect them at all. So you can also go through and tune the settings. You can make the projector much more brighter. You can try to optimize for that. You can, there's, there is some wiggle room there, but I've just found that like in those certain situations, you'd probably want to just, it's probably easier to just go through and code the, whatever you're scanning in something rather than trying to optimize the device, which gets difficult. Another place that this device rather does struggle is when you start getting into really large models. Now I understand like what this device is targeted for. It's targeted for people that really want a user friendly experience. It, it does struggle when you start getting into large scans and we're talking like you're really doing a high detail, high fidelity scan of something. It starts and you have multiple angles and you start trying to combine those together. When there's a lot of data there, it has crashed on me a couple times. And I think honestly, it's limitations of the hardware. I think this only has a couple gigabytes of RAM. I want to say four off the top of my head. Um, and that, in my opinion, makes me feel like that there is some type of hardware limitation on just how much this can scan. And I only found it like when you crank up all the settings to the max and you start taking like 30 some scans where you have the table, you know, rotate. That's when it starts encountering that issue. However, it is something to be aware of. And also, I believe this only has 16 gigabytes of storage, like onboard storage for your models. And sometimes when you start doing a moderately sized 3D scan, I was 3D scanning some drones, you start encountering some issues where the drone itself, you, you can't really progress any farther. You can't um, match the models up because it does start crashing because the models are just so large and is overwhelming the system. So you have to then lower the settings down a little bit. And to be fair, do you really need that high fidelity? Because there's a certain point where once you're at max settings versus when you're at like medium or low settings, most of the times you can't tell the difference. Uh, I'm gonna be bluntly honest. Like if you really need that high fidelity, if you're scanning something really detailed, sure. But there's a really also not that big of a need for the super high fidelity when it does a good job on a lower polygon count. And to be honest with you, my complaint about the surfaces, certain surfaces like reflective surfaces as well as dark surfaces is really just like a restriction of the technology. 
And I think it's much better to, again, finish the device, like coat the device on something, rather than try to hassle with getting some type of projector-based scanner to work. Even LiDAR-based scanners will struggle with certain aspects of that, especially with some of these reflective finishes. So it does depend a little bit on that. Overall, I think the scans that this puts out is really solid. I think the quality and the size of these scans that it can also create is really good too. You have a really diverse options versus something that's very small, which the quality on like single Lego pieces was really good, all the way up to large things like I was scanning my Lego Titanic. That's a really, really big piece that you can scan as well. So the matching works really good. The automatic matching works really good. And the scale and the sizes and ranges in which you can scan things also works really well. Overall, uh, thanks again to Matter Inform for sending me this device. I want to say that my experience with them, with their firmware, and getting the issues that I had fixed was also phenomenal. I take that as an added plus. And so that firmware and how quickly they were responsive for that, I got to give credit. It worked really well and it fixed my issue. So, um, yeah, thank you again, Matter Inform, for sending me this device. I'm really grateful. Check out my channel for other related tech reviews. And see you guys next time. Goodbye.